Welcome back, Piglets, to another installment of Culture by the Uncultured. We are your gracious hosts, Daniel and Taylor B. Um, we also have a special guest today who goes by Joey. Joey, you want to tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, first I'd like to say, uh, what do you mean special? <laughs> and uh, say, <laughs> nah, um, long time listener, kind of, first time guest. We're here uh, in Anaheim uh, for the Flognaw uh, Festival. That's why we're linked up. I'm a avid uh, reader of many things sports and music related, and I'm very, I'm very cultured. So I'm, I'm glad to be a part of the show today. For sure, for sure, I feel it. How long we've known you for? I've known you at least since uh, high school, I believe. I don't know how far back you and Daniel go. I've known him since about fifth grade. He was the first friend I made when I moved to from San Ysidro to Benita. I went to, went to this old church called Benita Valley. I had these little toy cars with me, and then he knew <laughs> he knew exactly what type of car it was before I could even like. He was like, "Yo, let me see that Shelby." Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. That's how I made friends with him. He was like, "He's oh, this was, is a Shelby. Uh, this other one's a GTO." And I was just sitting there playing with him, and I immediately grew up, and I was just like, "All right." It I was uh, it was a 1962. Sky blue Chevy Impala. I remember that one specifically. I remember mm-hmm. that car. That was dope. <laughs> yeah, I've known Daniel since I was like 10 or 11 years old. So that's that's how far back we go. Uh, Taylor B, we go back all the way to, I've probably known you since you were like a junior in high school, I think. And I was a senior in high school. That sounds about right. And then just playing football and basketball and video games and stuff ever since. So... I'm actually surprised this is my first time on the on the podcast. I'm a little upset, but we'll, we'll get into it. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, our show today is mainly going to be us talking about uh, Camp Flognaw. Like Joey said earlier on, we're out here in Anaheim. Flognaw is about 30 minutes from us. It's about 25 miles away, but with traffic and all that, having to find parking, it's like 30, 40 minute trip in total. This is mine and Daniel's second year at Flognaw. This will be Joey's first year. First, first, I want to ask Daniel. So far, the experience, do you like it better compared to last year or are you have you not made up your mind yet? Well, just off the first day, I enjoyed last year better. Um, I, I enjoyed the talent performance better than this than last year, than this year. Hell of a lot closer, too. Yeah, we were super closer last time. No, 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 no. no. Uh, last time we were further back. This time we were way closer. Oh, I thought you meant like we were staying. A little a little close for comfort there. Yeah, we the- got we got way too close in that Tyler concert, uh, 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 man. It was way too close for comfort. I feared for my life for a second. Like, I wanted to see Jesus, but not last <laughs> night. I, I want to. <laughs> um, but as far as the acts, though, like, some of the acts didn't really get me. We went to go see the internet, I believe, and you guys were all impressed. But I was sitting there like I'm, I was kind of bored, I no lie. But um, that's just that's not that, that's not an insult to them. It's just they're not my cup of tea outside of flock not type of thing. Like if I listened to them beforehand, maybe I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. But I really liked Domo Genesis. Like I told you yesterday, he makes me want to get back in the booth every time we go see him. Yeah, that's a, that's definitely an underrated act, and I I really appreciate every time we see him. And just like the energy he brings and the and his flows and just how like effortlessly he makes everything seem. He's definitely underrated, like I said, and I think that the project he make he comes with next is gonna be amazing. I mean, I believe I spoke about revisiting Facade Records earlier, uh, because I didn't I did just kinda like let stuff that he brings out just kinda pass over. I went back to it and I was like, This is amazing. And it was really cool because when he played, he played consecutive normal punches and I was like, Oh man, this is my jam right here and you know, I started rapping it and stuff and like it was just a really cool experience specifically for him. Kind of like Daniel said, it was a little bit more hype last year. And that's kind of one of the things I appreciate, like the mosh pits call to me, you know, getting in the crowd, getting involved at all costs. And I want to be in the front or close to the front, not very front. I'm not trying to get crushed against a gate, but being close and being able to see the artists and see everybody's reactions. And you just kind of see like even people who are not necessarily on drugs, like such as myself, it's like, it just calls to you and you just kind of get like in this hypnotic trance and you're just like, I'm ready to, I'm here to freaking to rage, you know, and which makes me want to go to Astro World, but that's, that's a story for another time. Anyway, um, Joy, your first experience at Flognaw, like I said earlier, is this year. What have you thought about it so far? I know that you're a little bit more hip to music than me or Daniel, as far as more, more, uh, lesser known artists as well as you know kind of expanding out your your horizons and genres and things like that you know you know a lot of music musicians and stuff like that you know people that we maybe maybe never even heard of before so what did you think about i don't i don't know if i know anymore i'm just i'm just addicted like everybody else who loves music. <laughs> but um for my first my first experience it kind of makes me wish i was at the one last year so i could have something to compare it to yeah but 
the performances that we saw, I feel like we made the right choices because, you know, some people go on at the same time as other people. Yeah. So I feel like we made the right decisions for us anyway as a group. We stayed together pretty much the whole time. But yeah, I actually I'm I'm more in favor of appreciating the different genres of cultures at places. I know we all have preferences as to what we like and what gets hyped. And even though like I, I you have to understand how crowd is crowd is a big part of music, especially live music. And you have to understand that just sometimes the crowd isn't as excited as you are. But if you really feel the music, it doesn't matter. That's how I feel. Sometimes I look like I'm not even enjoying myself, but I'm analyzing stuff and I'm listening very deep. So I enjoyed myself. Um, even uh, I was surprised by a few acts, really. I, I didn't know how much stage presence certain people had, you know, for the following that they had. So that was cool. And then the people that uh, the people that some of the acts chose to bring on stage with them were actually pretty impressive. I remember we were watching. Uh, who was it? Mike G. Yeah. And he had a he had a he had a low moment where uh, maybe it was a song that wasn't as well known. But um, he brought out this guy and it was immediate hype. Grabbed you with his uh, his outfit. First of all, <laughs> he had on he had on yellow high water pants with um, a yellow vest. And it was just super bright with a green hat. And we were like, what, what's this clown about? And he was jumping up and down and his bars were hitting. I was like, oh, that saved his performance, you know? And so it was really cool getting well, to know some people I don't know like that. That was Brandon's spirit animal. I mean, yeah. I told you that. <laughs> he, like, he resembles some. But, um, but for, for an experience all in all, we honestly, we didn't do too much carnival activities as much as we did just preparing to listen to the acts. Like we didn't, we didn't go to the ride section. We didn't spend too much time in the food area. The experience was great. I think what, honestly, the only thing that I didn't appreciate was the location. There was, there's too much to be said as to Flogna itself is where it was. It's the parking lot in Dodger Stadium. Um, it's a big venue, which is cool, but I had no idea the phone service would be non-existent. And people want to upload videos and stuff. And normally I have good connections. So if mine's not working, I know other people are frustrated. And I think that's it actually kind of helped me. My phone uh, didn't die the whole time because <laughs> I knew I wasn't able to upload anything anyway. But it was a it was a cool experience. I got to see a couple acts I never saw live, and I was kind of anticipating. I was watching Thundercat. That was cool. He's just, he's a bass player that likes to sing, and that's not something that you see a lot of anymore. So I thought that was cool. Um, Tyler killed his performance. That was crazy. We was we started off maybe like a hundred rows back and standing people, and by the time we were done, we had separated. Me and Daniel were together. We were probably about like maybe ten rows back. In a sea of people, and every five seconds, just getting pushed every which direction. Yeah, I remember. I want to know what was going through your head because the whole time through my head, you said, "Okay, here we go. We're gonna push further." In my head, I was like, "No, <laughs> <laughs> this is not uh -huh. safe no more. Like, why are we keep going?" But you would you would make the space now to feel it. Obviously, you know, and and the closer we got, the more I could feel this fear coming over the back of me, where I was just like, "Uh." Uh, well, because we, we had made great progress to start off with. And my my idea was I'm going to get us to the front. And when I realized there wasn't enough walking space and everybody was literally standing. I mean, I, I've never been in a, in a place where I didn't feel insecure for being sweaty <laughs> because everyone, everyone was sweaty. Everyone breath was hot. Everyone was invading everyone's personal space. We saw about what four or five people pass out or like about to pass out mm -hmm. from either like some kind of crowd anxiety or, or just dehydration. It was at, the, the, the lengths that people would go through just to see their favorite acts perform. That's, that's crazy. That part is the most amazing part to me because people would people know they got low blood sugar and they over there in the middle of a mosh pit. <laughs> like, bro, brother, what are you doing? This is physically irresponsible, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, I remember, I remember that last game. We were actually trying to – it took us almost an hour just to leak, get from the front of Tyler just to try to make it to the next act. And I remember we passed that guy that was passed out. They were calling the emergency services for him. He stood up and tried to go right back to the crowd after passing out. <laughs> We're probably we're probably giving the worst promo for carnivals and festivals just to make people think it is the worst experience physically. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, in my defense, I, I have a little lingering knee injury, so I was trying to keep up. But 
um, when the adrenaline uh, the adrenaline hits you and the the music starts, you don't really feel none of that stuff. For real. And then when the when the moment's finally over, you're like, wow, my knees are on fire, <laughs> and I've been stepped on about 19 times in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> I uh, little quick word of advice to people who plan on going to overly crowded clubs and carnivals: uh, stay away from white shoes. Try your best not to wear white shoes because I wore black shoes and now they look light brown and it's horrible. I could only, I could only imagine if I were to wear some forces or some classic Reeboks or something, you know, all white. Absolutely ridiculous. Never do that ever again. No, I'm, just, I'm saying the negative things about it, but it, 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 even though in the moment I low key hated it, that's going to be the story I tell everybody. Like, yo, we was in the middle of this crowd. Yeah, was, exactly. <laughs> there was 50 million people it's, next to me. It's the most memorable situation. I felt like a sardine in there. It was a sea of people. It really was a sea of people. Just pushing back and forth. It was crazy. Yeah. Just soul songs. Like, that's the crazy that, part about yeah. it. <laughs> people, Tyler was playing the piano and people were trying to mosh. And, and not, not to, uh, we'd have to probably go over the set list, uh, or excuse me, the, um, the acts for today because... We're only reflecting on day one of the carnival. Absolutely, yeah. And um, I actually have high expectations for day two. The artist lineup does seem a little bit more, you know, lit, as the kids say. Yeah, I'm going to look it up, actually, while we're... Uh... I'm going to stay away from anybody that's going to moss. I'm not going through that again. <laughs> I, we, we did enough to get a good story, but I'm not, it's not happening this time. <laughs> we're just going to have to meet at the tables. I'm, I'm going to stay in the back. Go ahead, do your thing, Brandon. Man, we got, we got, we got... <laughs> We went back there for for Juice World, right? That's when we like kind of just stayed there. Yeah, and Juice World started for Juice World's DJ came out and started throwing up some freaking bangers. Yeah, and, and we got it to the crowd, and everybody was kind of just pushing in. And then Juice World came on stage, and everybody got a super turn. And then he said that he wanted to play like a tribute song, which was uh, "Step Back" or "Take a Step Back," and which is uh, a song by XXX Tentacion and Ski Master Slum God. And the crowd went crazy. They immediately, a, 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 a circle opened up for a mosh pit. We jumped through there. We got further to the front, you know, at the end of it, just knocking people left and right. I mean, it was it was an incredible experience. I, I Every time I hear that song, though, I go crazy, and I just appreciate that I could hear it, even though I wish I could hear, like, the original artist play it. Um, I did get the chance uh, to see Ski Mask and Juice World play it, but I, unfortunately, I'll never get the chance to hear X play it, you know? That experience, I, I don't know what it is. I like being in the middle of the crowds. I like being in the mosh pits. That's, like, my my favorite part of the whole thing. Um, hearing the music, too, I, I, I definitely am with the moments that, like, the artists are just, you know, playing their hearts out for us. They're, they're You can tell they're enjoying the music. There was a moment in time during Tyler's set, I believe me and Joy spoke about this um, before, that uh, the, the crowd started singing the song. And then um, I'm sure that there was a song that queued up next. Yeah. But it was, it was kind of dark on stage, and you can see Tyler wave his hand like to not to not play the next song. And then when he did that, uh, the, he just like puts the mic to the crowd, and the crowd kept singing the song, you know. And he he was just so thankful, and you know he you know he said thank you to us for like fucking with Igor and stuff because you know it's obviously like even though his music has transitioned so much, like these last two albums have kind of really been like a huge. Uh, trans transition and transformation, you know, just for his own personal sound. Also, uh, for a lot of people, I actually, I have a lot of friends who don't see a lot of live music. Yeah. And I've brought them with me. And not this occasion. I, I was kind of the last leg in stepping in for another one of our friends. Um, shout out to Josh. Got his, uh, got his ticket for the low. <laughs> um, uh, something that I was kind of... Um, that I was thinking about last night was the difference between live performances and when you're listening. Um, I know I have a few friends that they, they've they never really been to concerts like that. It's just never been something that's drawn them, um, but they love music. So it's almost, to me, it sounds crazy. And I, I realized that the way people write their music, it doesn't always sound as good as it will live. Um, there's a lot of Tyler songs where I, I love Tyler, the creator, by the way, and I always have. But yeah, I was mad surprised to see you singing along to some of them songs. I was like, what? But yeah, I love, <laughs> I, I really love Tyler, the creator, I always have. Um, and I feel like a lot of his fan base is like that, like him or don't, you know? And uh, when you watch him perform live, realizing that his lyrics were not overly complicated, but simple enough to get the entire crowd, the entire crowd to sing his lyrics. Let me just, this was amazing, first of all. When his song started playing and he didn't say a single word for five minutes, played the intro. this man stood on stage frozen in a position with the mic in his right hand, arms to his side, and just sat there and watched the entire crowd sing his music before he even had to do anything. Crazy. Complete crowd control, effortless. 
uh, effortless crowd control. That's I don't I, maybe superstardom does that, but something about stuff like that is super empowering. It makes you feel like you're in a different place. It was pretty weird, actually, for me. So what but, were the what were the you think would be like the biggest difference between like Tyler and somebody that you were talking about? You went to go see Thundercat while we were watching. Double. Oh yeah, that was hard. Time slot matters in festivals absolutely um so when you have multiple stages and you put people in predicaments to choose you either have to choose to let me get to other stages and see some performance or let me get to this place early so i can see the whole thing it's kind of it kind of kind of wrecks your nerves a little bit for me because i wanted to see a lot but i there's no way i was going to pass up on seeing thundercat i've never seen him live but i listen to a lot of music that he's been a part of and i I was actually surprised with the amount of people that were at his performance. It was literally like it was a full it was a full crowd and just for a bass player that was singing melodical stuff and they were showing people in the crowd on the big screens and people were it, it's it, I love festivals because I see other people who are into music as much as I am. And especially the quirky stuff, the stuff that you wouldn't think is so popular. It kind of makes you feel at home. It's a different feeling. Absolutely. So like that, that part of the festival to me is the best part. Um, when Tyler like thanked everybody for like, you know, uh, really enjoying his last album, because I guess he he had a lot of naysayers and people saying, oh, he's falling off or oh, his style is different. It's not hard like it used to be. Well, I beg to differ because last night's crowd, you know, spoke otherwise. It was pretty it was pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy. Yeah, one of the funnest things I, I like about going there is that I actually like that part, trying to plan out, you know, your day. Okay, we're going to go here, we're going to jump here, we're going to jump here. That actually, <laughs> that actually, like, for some reason, that calms me a little bit because I'm, I'm the type of person that likes to plan things out, you know, I like to strategize, stuff like that. So us having to make the decisions like that actually kind of hit, hit on a nice button for me with my spirit. But like the funnest part, I think, about the whole thing is seeing everybody dress up everybody, or dress down, depending on who you are. <laughs> <laughs> depending on who you are. Interesting outfit choices, for sure. And, that, yeah. and you get that a lot with concerts and festivals. People have their outing outfits. You know, they just want to feel themselves or be be impressive. You know, sometimes people just do want to be noticed and, oh, we're out somewhere. I want to dress nice. But like we said, it's it's Flogna. It's, it's Tyler, the Creator's event and he is definitely one of the front runner advocates for individuality and uh you know being genuine as he's definitely quirky he wears clothes that don't often match he wears wigs jewelry that probably look better on women and uh unorthodox placements for tattoos and that's exactly what you got in the crowd yeah for sure that's exactly what that's exactly what yeah, you got I mean, in the crowd i remember i bought this shirt i was telling brandon and josh oh this shirt is wild man i'm gonna be i thought i was doing something nope <laughs> not it's not often when i wear a out i don't want to call it an outfit i wore all black pretty much i it's not often i wear an outfit and i feel out of place because i matched <laughs> I, I I feel like I, I if I if I would have had Stevie Wonder pick out my outfit, I would have fit into that crowd a lot a lot stronger than I did wearing all black. Absolutely, I I felt like a total moron, and it was it was and it was everybody's hot. it was it everybody's was, looking at you it like was low, fucking weirdo. Why are you matching? It was low to mid nineties um, until the sun went down at about five five thirty. The time change just happened. So California, this is actually pretty cool for us being outside at nighttime, and it's not even dinner yet. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> Yeah, I felt so. I it was so, the the scene was so colorful and bright. I felt completely out of place. Color color scheme wise, <laughs> the clothes, the, the outfits are definitely on point. I saw, I definitely saw two, three of the different uh, kind of themes or outfits. I saw are, are particularly noticed where there was one group that was dressed up in like camp gear because you know camp vlog and also they had like little like camping vests on, like they're a bunch of like scouts or something. Mm -hmm. Saw another group of people who were uh, they all had tie dye like jumpsuits on. That was kind of interesting. Right, so you could find your people real easily. And then uh, one guy I noticed when we were watching Damo, he was dressed like Ace from One Piece. Shout out to that guy because as soon as he walked past me, and I was like, "That's Ace's hat and that's Ace's necklace. This is super dope." I wanted to turn it around and be like, "Hey, R.I.P. to a real one," because you know, rest in peace to Ace. But you know. It's it's a cool place to dress up, and I've always had the idea to do it. I just don't want to be the only one out of all my friends who go somewhere, and I'm like, oh, I'm dressed up, and you guys are, you know, everybody else is just like, I'm wearing clothes, you know. Like, yeah, I, I had I the, you know, I'm not trying to be that. I had the idea last night that we should. Well, I'm sorry to cut you off, even though I cut you off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had I had the idea last night we should be Ghostbusters for the next one. 
No. I, I said that yesterday when we saw the tie dye people, and I was like, Ghostbusters jumpsuits will be go off in this place. Oh, see, we're already there. You are you in <laughs> with, the, with the fake vacuum on my backpack? Yes, or... sir. <laughs> It'll just be a camel pack. Instead. It's a, it's a possibility. Yeah, it's a possibility. I'm willing to look quirky. I, I just don't know how how often I'm willing to stop to take pictures with people if if it gets that much. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah, yeah. Did, yeah, sure. did you guys cross lines? You know, I don't know. We went to, we... <laughs> you guys, you guys, you guys are from Stranger Things, right? <laughs> uh, I I remember when we went to Comic Con. Uh, a lot of people were telling me, like, uh, complimenting me on my vest because I, I have a Warriors vest that I wore. Exactly. Um, I didn't wear it this year just because, like, I feel like I haven't lost enough weight yet. But but um, or took it to for Flogna. But I definitely wanted to wear. It, but I mean, like you said, I don't know how often I would want to be able to stop and take pictures if that's what people. I want. think. I mean, I think this, this event. A lot of people take pictures. You know. Yeah, I think this is the perfect podcast to talk about it because it's in the name. Culture has a lot to do with everything. Absolutely. And um, this touching on the attire and the acceptance of it, uh, something like like the Warriors, which is a very classic and very, I don't know how popular. It's one of those things where people who really like it, really, really like it. it. Yeah. So yeah. so you're going to get that. And, and shout out to other, uh, Daniel yesterday, he wore the, the Chance the Rapper brand hat right there with the number three on it. And that's oh. that's the only one I saw yesterday. Yeah, yeah. That's the only one I saw. And and I fe- a, a couple of people gave him, you know, shouted him out on it. And I feel like that was cool. What else did I, oh, and I don't want, I don't mean to offend anybody by, uh, by, by saying this because I do touch on all, all the topics whether they're hurtful or not but uh random disclaimer randoms um since we're talking about culture and attire I've never seen so many pairs of Doc Martens in my life <laughs> that, like where I'm from I, I live in southeast San Diego and you know it's a very um a widespread but every once in a while you see somebody wearing some Doc Martens and they kind of fit a they kind of fit a profile that you would think huh they're probably very you know they're either into fashion or they're into a certain kind of music yeah. and um I couldn't put my finger on it yesterday we were there and it was just about anybody was capable of wearing some Doc Martens and I thought to myself this is now a quite basic brand and I don't mean to put nobody down but uh, just, <laughs> just <laughs> I've never seen so many I, I mean, that there's only a few moments where a, a item of clothing can compete with the amount of Doc Martens I saw yesterday. And that's probably like, you know, I don't know, New Balances in Japan and uh, what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Jordans in New York or Tim's, you know, like this is certain by location. But I've never seen so many pairs of Doc Martens in my life. Yeah, I was actually scared to wear that gents hat the whole time. Like I was debating whether or not to take it because I'm the type of person I hate having something on somebody else has on at the same time. Yeah, that's like, irritating. Huh? <laughs> so the whole time I was just like, I don't think I should wear it. Then finally you were like, you're gonna, you should go leave the hat in the car. And I was like, fine, I'll go ahead and I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be pissed. I was going to throw, throw it in my backpack if I saw one. One hat, <laughs> one three hat. It was the last there. second addition. Speaking, yeah. speaking of hats, did I tell you guys how close I came to losing my hat? No. In the Tyler one. In the Tyler, yeah. So, so I don't know if you guys ever saw, but there was like a boonie hat and like some other stuff being thrown all over the place. At one point, I got the boonie hat right in front of me and I picked it up and I was like, you know, swinging it around and then I threw it too. And I just like I realized like, damn, that's kind of messed up. Somebody lost his hat and like he's there's no way they're gonna get it back. So at one point, I kind of levitated off the ground because the crowd is just pushing back and forth and I'm like, oh my oh, gosh, yeah. this is it. My hat just kind of like I started, you know, I'm sweating so much. My hat just slides off my head and I turn around and I was like, my hat and like. I reached out and this like this white dude behind me was just like kind of put his hand on it too. And he was like, you got it, man. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, my arm is like stuck in this awkward position, like reaching behind me, my body's twisting backwards and I'm trying to turn forward, but the crowd is just overpowering me. And I'm just like, oh my God, I have to get this in front of me before I let, before I have to let it go. Cause like my arm is just like, my arm was hurting so bad. So then finally, like, you know, like the crowd kind of moved another way and I just shifted back and I was like, oh my God. Oh my God, my hat. And I just put it back on and I was like, oh man, like, I, you know, I came so close to losing that hat. I was so scared, man. And and shout out to Josh, you know, you know, one of the, the co-owners of, of ADV clothing, you know, he gave me that hat and, and I appreciate it. You know, it's, it's one of my favorite hats. You went to great lengths for that. For yes, that got you, okay. to, to secure, to secure the hat. Well, I, mean, <laughs> secure the hat. <laughs> I mean, he had to, since I didn't do my job. Yeah. You could have I'm sure it'd be nice to just have the shirt, huh? <laughs> inside, inside joke, man. Um, oh man. Uh, Taylor B's friend uh, had a, had a shirt customized for him, and he gave it to Daniel to hand off to to Brandon. 
and he accidentally left it at home when I went to go pick him up. <laughs> and we got we got to his house. We got to uh, what time we get there? Maybe like fifty minutes later. Yeah, we're about fifty minutes away from from where we live. On our way up to Anaheim, you know, for the night, and uh, we get there. Hey, I forgot your shirt. <laughs> oh man, there's no way, there's no way I was gonna drive back for five or six times yesterday. You know, be real. You know, be real cool. I had that shirt. <laughs> well, look at it this way: you didn't sweat in that shirt. That's true. I just wore it to another event, huh? Yeah. But yeah, I feel like I lost my bandana a few times. Definitely got caught up in the mix. My glasses almost slipped off. The sweat was dripping down my face. Oh man! Uh, and my glasses almost slipped off a few times. That was crazy. You almost made me lose my hat. <laughs> Sorry. You swung that arm around. You were like, y'all, y'all ready for me to push? And you knocked my hat all the way through me off my head. Sorry. I'm sorry. There was a, a gu- guilty. There was a, I'm a, I'm a rather big fellow. I'm, I'm like 5'10", 5'11", and upwards of 300. You know, I'm a big dude. And uh, I know that at my size and my strength, I can knock people around, especially in the crowd. But that's not my stilo, you know, so I, I play very nice, especially in crowds. And there was just at one moment, it was like, man, we're completely stuck. We need some space. And there was this one brother behind Daniel looking at me like, you, come on, man, what you going to do? <laughs> oh, so, he, so he, right? So he, egged, so he egged me on and, you know, you know, for for lack of a better, you know, Gotta make you it know, do what it do. No bitch, you know. So I, <laughs> so I literally put my back to the crowd and I faced Daniel and this this random guy and I was like, "Y'all ready?" And I took three steps back and cleared about four feet of space. <laughs> and, and a bunch of people were laughing. It was hilarious, but. Um, yeah, I'd much rather I'd much rather be in an open space and enjoy music. the music as opposed to maybe getting close. If if we were there earlier, maybe. But by the time we got there, we were expecting. Uh, we were actually there for what three three shows in a row. Yeah, we saw the internet, then Juice World, and we were like, well, when people leave after these after these sets, we'll get closer, and closer. We'll just fill in the space and we'll get closer. But after Juice World to Tyler, it wasn't much much where to go. I just didn't think that it was gonna get that much crazier. Oh, Oh, yeah, just from the songs that just from the songs that are like you know kind of hyped that Juice World played, it was pretty crazy. And I was like, oh, this is fun, but we still kind of had room. But once Tyler got there, it was a it was a totally different atmosphere. There was no room. People were just forcing them their way in, and it was just like a sea of people basically pushing back and forth, lifting you off your feet. You're you know you're trying to like brace yourself to just stand still. You know you're just like, oh my goodness, man, who's doing all this pushing? Like. It, you, it's it's crazy just because it starts from so far back and it goes all the way forward and it, it makes you think like those guys in the front man they're basically risking their lives to see this show yeah right but all in all uh it's a good experience oh, yeah. uh, if you love music and you're willing to uh, and just each for every, for anybody listening just just so you guys know when you go to carnivals and festivals and stuff you'll get your money's worth when it comes to the entertainment Obviously, anything else like drinks and food, prepare to get taxed. Oh, my God. Okay. Like, pre- prepare to get taxed, especially places that don't let you bring in your food. And if if we're, if we're going to touch on Flogna specifically, there is a few things that would change. The fact that you can't exit and re-enter, that's a trap right there because they know people going to get hungry. Yeah. They know people, you know. So, shout out to them being on their money. I feel like some of the security precautions definitely need to be stepped up. Well, made. <laughs> <laughs> made. made. There there needs to be a, a at least on the you know, you figure you go to a concert like if we get all the way to the side, we can make it to the back. Yeah. That was not the case at all. Um they had it, it was just bad time. It was a uh, maybe it was rushed organization. Definitely not Tyler's fault. That's not his job to coordinate those things. But uh, I definitely, I if I were to come next year, I would definitely hope that they would make improvements on stuff like that. Yeah, I remember the first time they even told anybody about where the emergency exits were it was right before Tyler started. <laughs> I, I, I figured that I figured that should have been a hint, like something's about to go down. One girl was like, when, when that sign came out, she was like, where are the emergency exits? And I was like, I pointed, I was like, one's right over there. She's like, oh, thank you. Because <laughs> like nobody, nobody really pays attention to that stuff because you don't think anything's happened. But with how lax the security and the, and, you know, just like getting into, getting into the venue is, I don't know if it's because it's a bunch of weird kids and Tyler expects, you know, everybody's just going to be weird and kind of like normal-ish to, in, that, in that sense. Like you kind of thinking that people are coming home to their people almost, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're going to a place. In, so it's not really a place where somebody who's an outcast or an extremist would go to unless except for the fact that this is probably be the perfect event for an outcast or an extremist to go to to do things to people he doesn't like or to a group of people he doesn't like 
you know, because it's it's such a the, the cultures are mixing. I mean, you got it's it's just it, everything is so accepted there. So it's like for somebody who would be like that, that'd be the perfect place to go to, unfortunately. But I mean, the security definitely needs to be stepped up, in my opinion. I mean, no, you you walk through a little metal detector and they have a wand in case it can go off. But it's like that's it. You just open up zippers. They didn't I mean they didn't even look through your backpack, really, did they, Daniel? They looked through the big part of my backpack. They didn't even open the little zipper on the front. Yeah, they, they didn't tell us to take off our hats or nothing like that. I'm just like, all right, well, I mean. I could have anything under this hat, but all right. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Me and Joy were having a conversation about um, the people smoking and all that beforehand. He was like, are there any dogs like the smoke to look for smokers or looking for any drugs or anything? And I was like, from last year, I couldn't remember if there were or not. So when we walked in, I noticed that there weren't any dogs. And then seeing how many people got like drugs in and they were like smoking and all that through, through every concert. Yeah. And I was sitting there wondering, I was like, how easy would it have been for somebody just to get some type of weapon through? Anything. Yeah. Anything in it all. Yeah. That's not something that you, I don't like to fill my mind with negativity, but when you sit back and really realize it, like the, it's a, it's a place with a mass amount of people there. Ha- you have to take those kind of, uh, those measures, you know, those, yeah. but, um, all in all, it's a, it's a good experience. Um, I kind of want to give a shout out to this one dude. He was kind of, he was kind of feeling it. Um, I had heard him on one or two songs before that guy, Juto. Oh yeah. J-U-T-O. He little R&B Hi. singer. Fire. He had the crowd going a little bit. That was cool. I think it was the second performance of the day. Of the day, yeah, it was. It was the second performance of the day. I, just, I like appreciating acts that can actually sing, and it's not the microphone or the technology helping them out. And he definitely gained a new fa- a new fan in me after his performance. Who are you guys uh, looking forward to the most on day two? Uh, let me just give you the lineup. We're already going to be in the process of missing a few. Um, here's the few that we're going to miss: Laundry Day. Radiant Children, Clayro or Clyro, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, sorry. Destiny Rogers, Santi, maybe Santi, um, Daisy, and we'll probably be able to make something after that. Or in this, Nakel Smith. Um, I know you wanted to see Left Brain. That starts at like 3.30. Not a big deal for me, to be honest. Agreed. Um, the guy after that, Left Brain, uh, is uh, IDK, who I wanted to see. He's actually got some tracks recently on, I think, uh, yes 2k and he he also dropped an album recently called is he real it was a pretty dope album and it, and it's not bad it's not bad at all i like his stuff yeah. willow smith goes on at four o'clock at one of the stages followed by taco and the guy i want to see gold link the only reason why i wanted to see willow is because like i said i, I enjoyed her last album her last project she put out i i enjoyed it a lot but I also feel like Jaden will come out only because they're on tour right now, and Jaden's not actually in the lineup, even though and even though there's no real reason for him to not be in the lineup because he was on tour with Tyler, and now he'll and now Willow's here anyways, who he's on tour with now. So there's not really a reason for him to not. And be. who's Willow on tour with right now? Her brother, Jaden. Uh, who else? Oh, I don't know who else is on the tour. I just know that she's there or he's um, on 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 one of the other stages um, is Brock Hampton oh, yeah, Brock at six forty five, which I, I'm. I'm willing to see that, followed by the one I'm waiting to see, uh, YG, at 8.20 p.m. The, I can guarantee that's going to be the the most – well, I don't want to say turned up because uh, the baby is performing after her on the flog stage. Yeah. I want to see her too. But Right. Me personally, uh, my my go to one for this one is the YG because I, I know most of his music. Yeah, and also he's a he's a very strong. Uh, I mean, he's from LA. That's a West Coast cat, and on the same stage, it's followed by the uh, the question mark person, whoever. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, the special guest or the unknown person. What do you guys have your money on? Michael Jackson. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's tough to say. Um, there's a few people that I had speculated. Within the last couple of days, um, I'm not, first of all, my mindset going in, into guessing who that per extra person is, I'm not, I'm not going to judge the carnival based off of who the special guest is Yeah, yeah. because all we know is the the list now. So I can only, I can only, the unknown person is a plus, you know, um, whether that performance is good or not, you know, or somebody who I'm going to listen to or not. Uh, I wouldn't even consider that. That's just a honest. It's just plus. But um, there's a few people I speculated. I'm gonna were, say Frank. I'm gonna say Frank. You're gonna say Frank. There's a few people that I speculated, um, and I actually saw them uh, check themselves in on Instagram at Flogna. One of them was Anderson Pack. I was pretty much guessing a lot of people from LA. Yeah. Because it's close, and I know that he has. Tyler, the creator, has a lot of good relationships with a lot of people. Frank being one of them, and he recently dropped the project. There's a few people who would match the hype because you guys came last year and you said that the uh, the special guest was um, 
Kids see ghosts. Kids see ghosts. So that that was a few people that goes into that one. So um, I don't know how you can top that, especially since I guess it, it's been kind of a collective agreement that last year's list of performances kind of outshine this year's a little bit more lively a little bit more i i can't i can't myself i'm an r&b junkie so the slow stuff kind of caters to me a little bit but for a festival and a carnival it is a place where you want to keep it lively you know i feel like this year was more artistic or more more artists and rather than like you know performers who are just trying to hype up the crowd and stuff like that there's a lot more real good i don't i don't know another word Besides, like, artistry, you know? It was more of a showcase for, like, hey, in case you guys don't know these folks, here it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I don't mind that at all either. Yeah, exactly. I don't mind it at all. Um, there is one thing I had to make a choice was I wanted to try to get good. I knew I knew Tyler, the creator, set was going to be really good. I didn't know it was going to be as good as it was. I was actually glad I stayed there. I, I felt a little moment of regret not not going to see Daniel Caesar. But at the same time, what we just touched on is what went through my mind. I knew that his music is slower. And although I love the slow, I love soul music and stuff, I knew that the setting that it was in, I wasn't going to enjoy myself as much as a hype setting. Yeah. So I, I had to I had to make that choice. But um so right now the only thing I'm 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 not okay with is the fact that I had to miss Daniel Caesar, but I would much rather have not missed Tyler the Creator's performance. Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, I I personally said uh, earlier, uh, just to you guys, that I believe this is the best performance by Tyler the Creator that I have ever witnessed. I've seen Tyler the Creator, uh, I believe, five times now. Uh, I've saw him in Seattle the first time when he was on tour by himself. I saw that with my boy Gomez. Uh, no shout out to Gomez because that was the most that was the worst concert experience I've ever had. Afterwards, so no shout out for him. <laughs> Um, second time I saw him was when he did the the ASAP Rocky tour. You know, that's pretty much when their bromance all began. That was a great performance. I saw him again in San Diego shortly after I got back from the military. That was a great show. And then I saw him obviously in the, the theater. I saw him again for the no, that actually that was actually at the House of not House of Blues. Um, what's the one in North Park? Uh, Observatory. Yeah, the Observatory. That's where his that, was at. He did like a that short place gets like, lit in there. That environment's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. And then I saw him last year again, of course, at, uh, at Vlognon. And this will, so this will be my fifth time seeing him, correct? Yeah. But it's it great shows, great performances. I, I, I think he's a wonderful artist, and I can't wait to see what he brings in the future. Uh, just for those of you who don't know, also, we uh, Tyler Creator won the Music Innovator of the Year Award. Yeah. And, I mean, if you just look at his – go to his discography like he did last night – his, his music and the sound has definitely changed over the years, and he's definitely brought a lot to the table. Heck, heck of a talent. Yeah, I can remember that one moment we were trying to push out, push our way out um, to get through the crowd just so you know we could breathe. And we, get, <laughs> <laughs> and we got to a point, and, oh, and then Yonkers came on, and I totally stopped and turned around. And Joey's like, keep going. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, we, we can't move after this one. <laughs> <laughs> so that was actually, we saved our own lives getting out of there before that song came on, I feel like, and right before her, um, she came on, too. And I told him, right, right when she came on, I was like, if he brings out Frank Ocean right now, it's going to get completely crazy, even more so. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what's gonna come on soon? For real. But as far as today, I'm, I'm I really want to see uh kind of want to see Gold Link just because I, I know that this is one one of my favorite songs he has. It. Doot, doot, doot. Better watch your back. I'm a maniac. <laughs> I, I love that song. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm gonna be the maniac when that song comes on. I'll be the one jumping um, around people around. Things uh things like this. This is this is probably like my fifth or sixth uh like concert setting or a uh, carnival or festival setting and it, it kind of every time i go to one it makes me want to put on my own oh yeah like i wish uh, yeah it pushes me it pushes me to because i like you said i do a lot of research and i know a lot of you know people that aren't like they deserve a lot more attention than they get and uh there's definitely moments where I feel like there's a lot of people who are very good at marketing and not so much good at music and they excel in music because of it. And I feel like there's a part of me that feels like it's not fair for people who are very talented, who suffer in other areas like marketing or like ability, you know, yeah. and they don't get that exposure. And that's why I'm okay with the, you know, the less popular acts 
at festivals because you have to have something going good for yourself to be selected to do that. So, you know, exactly. that's a that's a big step for a lot of those people. But all right, that probably wraps it up for this episode. Let's get the heck out of here and go enjoy day two. So, all right, Piglets, this has been another installment of Culture by the Uncultured. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Culture by the Uncultured. That's one word. Also, don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud, and subscribe to us on YouTube at Culture by the Uncultured, and that's going to be multiple words. Rate us on Apple Podcasts and leave us comments on YouTube. Also, be sure to visit our website, www.culturebytheuncultured.com, and we'll catch you guys next time. See you. Bah, ram you. (laughs) 